The Holy Spirit leads us in our inner man into the plans and purposes that He has for us. In this message, we learn how to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit in our spirit in order to carry out His instructions and follow His leading. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. It talks about the power that our words have. The words that we speak. Sometimes we, we don't think twice about releasing or uttering a word. Now these words have power. And scripture says that it's as powerful as having death and life. The end result of a word can be either death or life. It can bring about death. We can speak death or we can speak life. And even as God has given us that choice, and even as God has given us that ability, let's speak life. Amen. Let's declare life. So what are some of those things that you can, or people whom you can speak life over? We can speak life over ourselves. The best way to speak life is to declare the word of God. Go to the word of God and find out what does the word of God talk about me? What is God saying about me? So when we say what God says, it brings about life. And about the Lord Jesus, John chapter 6 and verse 63, it says, the words, the Lord Jesus saying, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So when we declare the words of the Lord, when we declare what God has spoken over our lives, we are actually declaring life. So we can declare life over our lives, over ourselves. We can declare life over our situation. When we go to work, we can declare life over our workplace. We can declare life over our career. We can declare life over our relationships. We can do that. And we can choose to do that. And having said that, I just want to say that it's very challenging to speak life. Right? Because you see some situations, situations which are so challenging, so difficult. And we really need the help of the Holy Spirit who quickens this word. Who gives us this word. Who quickens the word of God. And then we speak it. We release it. And we speak life. Amen. So let's do that. Let's make it part of our lifestyle to speak the life of God. All through the week and the days to come. Amen. Let's hold our Bibles in the air. Let's lift up. Uh, Let's lift up the Bibles. Let's stand. And let's say this. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word, I believe His word, and I live by His word. Christ is my master, and to Him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shake hands with the person next to you and say, Speak life. Speak life. Amen. Now, speaking life makes a difference. It actually builds us up in the inner man, builds us up in the spirit, and we can see it, we can experience it. When we speak life, we experience a mood change. Try that this week. Speak life over our situation. You experience a change in our emotions as well. Okay, we've been studying about the Holy Spirit. Last Sunday, we looked at how we need to walk in the Holy Spirit. How, how many of you tried out what you learned? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> okay, you know, when we, when we learn the Word of God, just try it out. Okay, some of us are very, very eager to try out. Like there's a new product uh, in the market. There's an ad. Immediately you want to try out. 
right? How many of you are like that? There are some early adopters, right? Immediately, you want to try it out, you want to, you know, say some recipe, you want to try it out, you want to do that. And there are some of us who want to wait and watch. Hey, I just want to see how it is, how it turns out, and then I will try. And some of us are very late. You know, we wait, we wait and wait, and then we, okay, we step in, we try out stuff. When it comes to the Word of God, the Word of God, you know, it, it exhorts us, do not be forgetful hear us only, but be diligent doers. So when we receive the word, and when you know, hey, this is the word of God, and this is the principle in the word of God, what should we do? Try it out. Walk in it. Obey the word. And when we do that, we will experience the word of God. We will experience what the word says. But unless we try out, unless we step out and do what it says, we will never experience. Okay. So I just want to encourage us to Walk in the spirit. Whatever we learned, let's walk in it. Let's try it out. Let's be early adopters. Let's just dive in and do the word of God. Okay, today we're going to look at another aspect of um, living in the spirit or life in the spirit. And it's titled being led by the spirit of God. You know, the, the Holy Spirit brought about new life in us. Yes, he brought about new life. And this new life, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit that brought... Uh, this new life that the Holy Spirit brought about impacted us in two areas. One, our identity. We saw that last Sunday. Our identity changed. We have a new identity. Now, identity answers that question, who am I? So the Holy Spirit changed that and provided the answer for that and established us in that new identity, saying that you are a new creation. You are not a nobody, that you are a child of God. And the second thing that the Holy Spirit brings about is purpose. Purpose, which answers the question, hey, what am I here for? Really, what am I here for? And where am I heading? Now, these are questions that all of us have. Some of us have, some of us have it early, some of us have it late in life. Who am I? What am I here for? Where am I heading? And in Christ, these questions are answered. These queries are satisfied. The Holy Spirit brings about that knowing in our spirit. Now we see that in Christ we have purpose and meaning. Let me read Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, not that I have already attained, these are the words of Paul, or I am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Okay. He's saying, I'm going to lay hold of that for which he has laid hold of me. So there is a that for which he has laid hold of me. And what is a that? That's the purpose of God. That's the plan of God. There is that that for which he has laid hold. He held us. He has come and he has he's laid hold of us. So Paul is saying, you know, I, I press on that I, I may lay hold of that. Ephesians 2 and verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So it says that we are his workmanship. Beautiful. And the Greek word used there is poema, which means a work of art. You are a work of art. Created in Christ Jesus. What are we created for? What are we made as new creations for? For good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God has prepared these plans. He has these beautiful plans, unique plans for each one of us. We should be, uh, you know, we should be aware of that. That each one of us, we have a unique plan. We have a purpose in God. God has a plan and purpose for each one of us and he has created these good works so that we can walk in them so that we can live them out so that we can go to those places where he wants us to go meet those people whom he wants us to meet and do those things that he's called us to do so he's, he's already prepared these good works now the holy spirit this is the beautiful part the holy spirit reveals 
these good works reveals these purposes what is it that i should walk in he reveals it which means as a believer i am on a journey of discovery as i go from strength to strength as i go from glory to glory in god i'm on this journey and i'm on a continuous journey of discovery and the holy spirit he reveals he unveils these purposes the holy spirit has come in other words to lead us into the plans and purposes of god so we need the holy spirit we need him to reveal to us so we can walk in them right and i think the greatest thing that we can do the most exciting life that we can live is when we discover the plan and purpose of god and when we walk in it when we walk in them most exciting christian life is anything but boring is anything but boring it can be a lot of things like you know it's difficult challenging but it's not boring amen and the holy spirit has called us to you know he's called us and he wants to reveal these things to us and he wants us to lead us into them and that is what we see in 1 corinthians 2 and verses 9 to 10 but as it is written paul says i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him so he says i has not seen i've not seen with my natural eyes i've not hear, heard with my ears nothing you know i don't have these plans in my heart look at verse 10 he says but god has revealed them to us through his spirit you know sometimes we we make that statement i i don't know what god's will is you know and we start asking you know what is god's will when we are in our teens right god i wish your will for me is that i marry this person how many of you you know ask that question is it god's will when we go you know most of the times in at least in our days when we had our youth camp in the you know question answer time that's 90% of the time you know how do i know god's will and the reason behind the question is this <laughs> right so the thing is this god reveals his heart god reveals his plan to us through the holy spirit through the holy spirit another scripture we can uh, go to is uh, romans chapter 8 <clears throat> verses 14 to 16 it says for as many as are led by the spirit of god these are sons of god for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba father verse 16 the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god there are many things that we can learn here it says first of all verse 14 as many are led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god or the daughters of god we are children of god when we are led by the spirit of god so the spirit of god leads us if we can call ourselves as sons and daughters of god as children of god then it goes without saying that the holy spirit leads us we can expect the holy spirit to lead us it's up to us to follow but he will definitely lead amen so as children of god the holy spirit will lead us look at verse 16 it says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god so the holy spirit does something with our spirit he bears witness so there is this information in our spirit that we are children of god and the holy spirit bears witness kind of confirms testifies and assures us that we are children of god and we need that assurance time and again we need that assurance the holy spirit brings about that assurance brings about that witness and if you if you notice uses the word our spirit the holy spirit bears witness to our spirit you know when we look at scripture man is described like this that we are spirit soul and body so many times we we use it interchangeably right we talk about the soul as the spirit we talk about the spirit as a soul but scripture is very clear it talks about the spirit soul and body 
And we see that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, we talks about the spirit, soul, and body. It says, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is the spirit? What is the spirit? In James we read, as the spirit without the body is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Which means that when the spirit leaves the body, a body ceases to function. So the spirit is sometimes called as the heart of man, our innermost being, the inward man. And we, uh, we can look at several uh, references, Second Corinthians 4 and verse 16, where Paul writes and he says, Though our outward man is perishing, our inward man is being renewed. So what does that mean? That the outward man has an expiry date on it. Right? But the inward man is the eternal part of us. It goes to be with God. You know, how many of you know that we are going to live forever? Really? Put your hands right up. You know, that's the truth. God, who is an eternal, who is the eternal spirit has created us in his image and we are first and foremost spirit beings who will live for eternity. But where we live in eternity, for eternity, depends on the choice we make. The choice, the decision that we make to follow Christ, to receive him, that changes our destiny where we choose to spend eternity. But we are eternal beings. So though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed. And the inward man, the heart of man is the spirit of man. So what is the soul then? The Greek word used there is suke, from which we get the word, you know, psychology and so on. So it talks about the mind, the will, the emotions, the intellect. Okay. And then, of course, we have, we live in this body, this outer shell. Paul calls it the tent. Peter calls it the tent. And uh, I think it is Paul, yeah, he calls it the outer man, the physical part of us. Now that perishes. So we have spirit, soul, and body. Now the Holy Spirit bears witness in our spirit. Okay. The Holy Spirit bears witness in our spirit. So this is the primary way in which the Holy Spirit leads us. Now, we are being led by the Spirit of God. And therefore, you know, we are the children of God. We are the sons and daughters of God. But he leads us in our spirit. So it's very important that uh, for us to recognize the leading of the Spirit in our spirit. Because if I do not recognize, if I do not understand the Spirit of God leading me, then how can I do what he's calling me to do? How can I work? How can I walk in the purposes? How can I do the things that he's called me to do? So it's very important for me as a believer, as a child of God, to recognize the witness of the Spirit in my spirit. What the Holy Spirit is saying, what the Holy Spirit is speaking, and how he is guiding me in my inner man. Now I need to understand that. Yes, you know, the, uh, God has given us a mind, a sharp mind. He's given us intellect, and we need to use that But we also see in scripture that believers have an extra dimension and the Holy Spirit chooses to speak to us, give revelation, guide us in our inner man. So it's important that we we learn how to recognize so that we can follow. We need to be able to hear and understand what the Holy Spirit is saying. Otherwise, we will not be able to do it because the voice of our own emotions can be louder sometimes. Fear can be loud. Sorrow, extremely loud. Pain, very loud. Sometimes trying to drown out what the Holy Spirit is saying in our heart. So we need to be able to identify and say, God, what is it that you're saying in my spirit? So that when he leads, we can follow, we can do. Now we pl- I played this game uh, in a youth camp. 
again many years ago. The game is like this, 10 of us here and 10 of us on the other side. And there's a coin in the middle, right? And the, those of us who were here, we were blindfolded. And the task was this, we need to go and uh, pick up that coin. Now the coin was placed there after we were blindfolded. Now the 10 who were on the other side, our teammates, they needed to give directions. So they will say, okay, five steps, one more step, take a turn to the right. No, no, you're too far, go back and all that. So it seems easy, but the thing is everybody's shouting. Everybody's screaming and saying, no. And you need to really strain to, to hear what your teammate is saying. Right? We need to be able to hear clearly what the person is saying in order to be able to walk straight and find that coin. And so also, in our life as believers, we need to learn to hear the voice of the Spirit. Understand the voice of the Spirit and what He's saying to us. Because there can be so much confusion. There can be, you know, things that we see can seem more real than what is unseen. And the Holy Spirit wants to lead us. So, we need to learn to hear the voice of the Spirit. But the thing is this, that every believer can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Every believer, every child of God, no matter how long we are, you know, in this walk of faith, no matter how mature we are, we can hear the voice of God. So can we say that? I can hear the voice of the Spirit. I can hear the voice of God because I am His child. And this is what the Lord Jesus says in John chapter 10 and verse 27. He says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And in John chapter 15 and verse 26, talking about the Holy Spirit, he says, He, the Holy Spirit, will testify of me. So the Holy Spirit will testify of the Lord Jesus and we will hear the voice of the Lord Jesus and we will know him and we will follow him. So let's, uh, let's look at how the Holy Spirit, you know, speaks to us. You know, this section is really nuts and bolts. Okay. So how many of you like to go down to the nuts and bolts? Okay, some of us are big picture people. Uh, we just say, you cut to the chase. I want, you know, what happens in the end. But today, this section, it's about the nuts and bolts. We are going a little bit deeper and into the details, right? Now, all of us are very aware of our physical senses, right? The sense of feeling, the, sun, the sense of um, uh, seeing, hearing, taste, smell. We are aware of that, right? So these are our organs, our physical organs of perception and uh, from which we get information. And our, our mind is constantly, you know, receiving information. I can see uh, many people sitting here. I can, the sense of seeing, I can hear my voice, you know, the sense of hearing and so on. So we are aware of our physical senses. Now when we look at scripture, we see that there is a parallel five sense in the spirit. Okay. Now this section is actually adapted from a uh, pastor's book, Understanding the Prophetic. And there's this chapter about hearing from the Holy Spirit. And I would really recommend us to go back and refer to it and read it for a you know, better understanding. Okay, so first we look at the sense, the spirit sense of feeling. Okay? It could be joy, it could be peace, it could be restlessness, uneasiness. It's not in our emotions, but in an, it is in our spirit. Now, these can be temporary or it can continue for a period of time. But the thing is, the fact is that the Holy Spirit is communicating to us with these feelings in our spirit. Okay, Let's look at one of them. Colossians 3 and verse 15. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be th thankful. So he's talking about the peace of God ruling in our hearts and that usage there ruling in our hearts is really saying, let the peace of God be the umpire. 
let the peace of god be your judge now we want to make a decision you want to know what god feels about it you know we want to know the heart of god now the holy spirit will give us a sense of peace about it and in colossians 3:15 we are exhorted to allow that peace of god to rule in our hearts to let that peace of god be our umpire to allow that peace to discern and judge between the good the better and the best so maybe we pray and we ask god god what decision do i take and sometimes you know you see that in the natural it's all chaotic it doesn't make sense you see that hey i i would never decide on plan b because x y z all these factors doesn't they just don't measure up they just don't measure up you know i can't i can't do that but yet in my spirit there is that peace which the holy spirit is giving the peace of god the peace of god which surpasses our human understanding what we read in philippians chapter 4 and he says that this peace of god will be our judge will be our umpire okay so the holy spirit gives us this peace and why does he do that so that we can actually discern we can actually judge in the natural things may be good may not be good but god gives that peace so we need to learn to discern that peace in our spirit secondly you know acts chapter 17 and verses 16 to 17 paul you know uh, it's about paul and paul was going to, was in athens verse 16 says now while paul waited for them at athens his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the jews and with the gentile worshipers his spirit was provoked within him he was provoked he was moved very deeply Athens probably was a beautiful city but he sees these things he sees these idols and these places of uh, worship to the unknown god and so on and he is provoked in his heart he's provoked in his spirit he stirred up he needs to do something about it and therefore he goes and reasons with the people in the synagogue and um, in the sorry in the marketplace and he reasons with the jews also about and shares gospel shares the lord jesus with them compelled by the spirit if you move to acts chapter 18 and verse 5 when silas and timothy had come from macedonia paul was compelled by the holy spirit and testified to the jews that jesus is the christ so he was compelled by the holy spirit so he, you know sometimes we feel that compulsion hey, i need to do this i need to go here i need to call this person i need to give this to this person and when we act on it we see that yes that was the hand of god that was the holy spirit telling me something communicating something to me in my spirit so the holy spirit leads us with a sense of feeling in our spirit secondly seeing you know a picture is worth a thousand words you look at a picture and you understand and that is why we teach children we we show the picture and then we tell them what it means and then they understand right a picture is worth a worth a thousand words so god can actually give us a picture maybe you get up in the morning and then suddenly there's this flash of this person's face before your eyes and it's it's actually not physically but in your spirit so the holy spirit brings pictures now it could be still pictures it could be sequences it could be like a movie and what are these the ways by which the holy spirit speaks let's look at one of them uh, when it comes to the faculty of seeing job 33 and verses 14 to 17 Job chapter 33 for God may speak in one way or in another or in another yet man does not perceive it in a dream in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds then he opens the ears of men 
and seals the instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. So God uses dreams. The Holy Spirit uses dreams to speak to us. And you might have that question, what? In this day and time? Oh yes, he uses dreams to speak to us. When you look at um, the life of Joseph, Joseph, the wife of Mary, I'm sorry, husband of Mary, Matthew chapter 1, the Holy Spirit or God spoke to Joseph in a dream. And what was that instruction given? Joseph, go and take Mary to be your wife. That was the instruction. And the instruction came to Joseph in a dream. Can you believe it? And he obeyed. He obeyed. An angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream. Matthew chapter 2. The angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream and warned him and said, you must leave. And he obeyed. It was just a dream. He didn't say, oh, I had a bad dream. I had a nightmare, you know. This warning, it's terrible. It must have been something I ate. No, no, he obeyed the dream. And then we read in chapter 2 again that the angel of the Lord comes and says, okay, now everything is fine. You can go back. And then he obeys. So all these three key decisions he made based on what the angel of the Lord told him in a dream. Now, dreams come because of various things, because of stuff that we eat, because of uh, medication, maybe, maybe, maybe because of, you know, our mind is overworked and you're constantly thinking about something. But it is true that the Holy Spirit speaks to us in dreams. And we need to learn to interpret what God is telling us in a dream. And I would really encourage us to to read that book, Understanding the Prophetic. There's a whole um, section on how we can interpret, you know, uh, prophetic imagery and dreams and so on. So you read that. Moving on, we, we go to Acts chapter 10 and we read about Peter. Now he fell into a trance, the word of God says. Acts chapter 10 and verse 9. The next day, as they went about their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him. Now we know that he heard a voice saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And he said, No, God, I can't do that. And then the sheet went back. It was done three times. Verse 17. Now while Peter wondered what within himself what this vision which he had seen meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. So God orchestrated and God, Holy Spirit, communicated this to him. He gave him a trance and a vision and he saw this. Now it was something that had, that had a connection with the men who were at the gate, the men who had come from Cornelius' house. So God can speak to us in a vision, in a trance. And he does so even today. I remember once when, you know, when I was living a life, a, a dual life, a life of sin, I was, you know, I was living, living a, a Christian life on certain days and I was living, a, you know, my kind of life um, on certain other days. No, I was into times and seasons and so on. But I was living a very dangerous life. And it was going on. Now God warned me. And I really don't know whether to call it a vision or not. But I was sitting in my hotel room. And I had this picture. And it was a sequence of pictures. And in this picture I saw this little child uh, going up a staircase. And at different places on the stairs, there were these cute little gifts. They were there. So the little child was holding on to someone's hand and walking up and, and was very happy just picking up these gifts, trying to you know, take all these gifts and collect it and, and walk up. But as the child walked up, as the child climbed the stairs, it suddenly became darker and darker. And the child became very afraid. And the child wanted to leave. And the child was trying desperately to shake her hand off, shake the hand of the person holding her hand. 
But when she turned around and looks at the hand, that had become a claw. And it was holding her, it was gripping her, and she couldn't let go. And I, I had this thing, I saw this thing, and God was telling me, hey, that's you. That's you. No, you're trying to live your own life. You're just indulging in these things. You're trying to live a life of sin. But that's you. you know, it's going to take a hold of you and you're going to be desperate trying to shake it off. It's going to be tough. That's you. And the thing is, when I saw it, nobody explained to me. Nobody explained. I just knew in my spirit that was me. I just knew in my heart that was me. Now God chooses to speak to us, to get our attention. And God might be warning us, maybe through other people as well. He might give a vision about us to others and say, go, this is what is happening. And sometimes God opens our spiritual lives to see into the spiritual realm, which happened uh, as in the case of, um, uh, you know, we read in, uh, in the case of Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 6. Uh, Elisha's servant was saying, you know, alas, my master, what shall we do? The people who are surrounding the city with horses and chariots and so on. So Elisha, Elisha says, you know, relax. He prays and he said, Lord, I pray that you would open his eyes. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So God can choose to open our spiritual eyes and we see stuff, and that's God speaking to us, communicating something to us. Okay, so we looked at feeling, we looked at seeing. Now the third one is the spiritual faculty of hearing. You know, when it comes to hearing, the physical sense, it's about hearing audibly. But in the spirit, we hear the words, but it's in our spirit. It's like an impression in our spirit. Sometimes it could be a word. It could be a series of words. It could be sentences. It could be just an impression, an instruction. You know, I used to make fun of preachers who'd come and say, you know, the Lord spoke to me. And we were in school. You know, we'll just talk, you know, how can people come and say, you know, the Lord spoke to me and the Lord said this. And you know how these pastors are. They come one morning and, you know, they say that. And, you know, we used to joke about that. But I believe, when you look at scripture, you know, I was just convinced that over a period of time that God does speak. It's not a figure of speech to say God speaks. He does so literally. And it's the language of the spirit, right? And the language of the spirit is also to give us a word which we can hear in our spirit. It's, you know, you just hear a word. Sometimes you're praying for someone and you, it's just a word. You might even see a word, but you hear a word in your spirit. It's almost audible. And you go to that person and say, you know, I don't know, but this is the word I just sensed in my spirit. And you share that. So it's a deep impression sometimes. It's, it's a quickening. It could be a quickening of the word of God. The word of God. We've read scriptures time and again, but suddenly the Holy Spirit puts a spotlight. He quickens it to our spirit and it makes sense. It's a rhema word of God, an impression. It's like, you know, you press your hand on a wet sand and that impression is there. It's that weighty feeling on the inside, what God wants us to do. And um, sometimes it defies what is happening in the natural. Now, that's the thing. And I remember this evangelist, you know, um, his name is Brother Rajkumar, and he shares this incident and how he was in an airplane and he was going towards Delhi and from some place, and, and he was in this aeroplane, and he was just sitting there, and suddenly he felt an impression. He felt God saying that he needs to go and talk to the air hostess. Now, this was back in the day, Air India, no other, you know, no private privatization of aircraft uh, or air services. So he, what he did was he looked, at, he looked at the air hostess, and he saw that she was very happy. She was beaming. She was welcoming everyone. Welcome. And he said, no, 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 this can't be God. This can't be God. She's happy. Everything is fine. 
But again, that impression on the inside, go speak to her, tell her that she has a problem. This was a message that he felt. Tell her that she has a problem, ask her to give that problem to me and I will solve it for her. That was it. Now he, he just saw the face and he was like, no, 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 it can't be. But this kept growing, this impression, this sense kept growing, growing. And uh, pretty soon, you know, they were, they were about to land. And the thing is, uh, he, he thought, okay, God, I will do something. I don't have the guts to tell her, so I will write it on a piece of paper and I'll give it to her. So he writes it on a piece of paper. And, he, and, he, and the way he describes it, he just takes it in his hand. He just walks back. And she's actually at the, you know, at the end of the aircraft. She, he goes to the restroom and he just goes in. He gives her the paper and he goes into the restroom and locks himself in. He's like, oh God, what's gonna, I don't know what's going to happen. The thing is, he can't stay there forever. The plane is going to land. <laughs> so he just opens the door and peeps out. And he looks at her face and it's a mess because she's been weeping. The makeup and everything is messed up. And all, all that she could ask him was, how did you know? How did you know? And he went on to tell her, I don't share his phone number or whatever, contact information. And, and the thing is that she had a problem. You know, she has going through a bad marriage and... Um, and God knew about it, of course. And when he shared that, he was able to lead her to the Lord and the marriage was restored and so on. But it started with an impression. And you look at the face of the person, the person is all fine. And many times the Holy Spirit speaks to us in that way. He go tell that person this thing. It's an impression. It's a quickening. It's almost as if, you know, you can just miss it. Maybe it's just, you know, my emotions. I'm just being, you know, I'm just overreacting. But the Holy Spirit chooses to use the faculty of hearing. Sometimes it can be an actual audible voice for the intended audience. Like Samuel. Samuel heard the voice of God. He goes to Eli and he says, did you call? He says, no. Because Eli didn't listen. Eli didn't hear, but Samuel heard. Samuel, uh, Eli had the wisdom to tell Samuel, oh, next time when you hear the voice, you tell God, here I am God. Speak God for your servant listens. So God can speak to us in an audible voice as well. You know, very interesting thing happened when I was in Champa this time, um, teaching. And, and we, I was teaching about the, the understanding the prophetic. And when it came to this about hearing the voice of God, you know, I asked them, you know, how many of you have heard the audible voice of God? I expected every hand to be down, but almost some 50, 60 percent, you know, they put their hands up. You've heard the audible voice of God. I was like, okay, okay, next lesson. <laughs> well, the thing is this, you know, there are people who are so simple and who are so sold out to God and God chooses to speak. It, does, it doesn't mean that it's a, you know, it's a you know, higher way of speaking. No, it's just that God chooses to speak to them in the way they, they would listen. The fact is they're available. In fact, we know someone who is, um, is totally illiterate. Now, this lady, you know, she, doesn't, she cannot read, she cannot write. In fact, she doesn't know numbers. I don't know how she survives. But she knows huge chunks of scripture. And when we asked her, it's like, she gets up in the morning and prays and God just speaks to her in the audible voice. And there's an impartation of scripture and what she needs to speak. So there's no printout and there's no sermon notes. Uh, she just goes, the word is in her, she speaks. Whatever God has put in her heart, that's it. God chooses to speak audibly as well. Let's not rule that out. The Holy Spirit. And uh, we also read about the sense of taste. Ezekiel has a spiritual experience in Ezekiel chapter 3. We read about it. We see that he is given a scroll. He eats it and it tasted like honey. The sense of taste, the sense of smell. Now we don't read too much about it, but 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 16 talks about the aroma of death 
the believers being an aroma of death to some the aroma of life to some revelation 5 and verse 8 revelation 5 and verse 8 talks about the prayers of the saints coming up as incense before god we know that incense has a fragrance so um there is this uh, you know taste and smell as well but the fact is that god speaks to us in sometimes very simple ways and we will do well to receive that we will do well to train our spirit train ourselves in the spirit to receive it to be sensitive to it okay so how do we train our spirit man Um Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 13 it says that not everyone who partakes of milk is unskilled for, sorry for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for he is a babe verse 14 but solid food begin belongs to those who are of full age that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern senses exercised to discern both good and evil so senses here refers to again organs of perception you know it can refer to our physical senses but it also means our spirit sense our spirit sense to have our spirit sense exercised to discern to choose what is good what is evil so to train our spirit sense first and foremost we need to be in the word of god there's no two ways about it because we can sense something and it could be our own emotion it could be of the soul but what will really help us discern between what is of the spirit and what is of the soul is the word of god right and we read about that in hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 for the word of god is sharper than any two-edged sword Uh, let's just turn there hebrews 4 and verse 12 word of god is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit so it's imperative that we need to be in the word which means that we need to take time to read the word of god take time to meditate on the word of god you know um i know that all of us read the word of god we read casually but meditating on it is different from just reading the word of god there's a difference to meditate on it like the jews would do it's to mutter the word of god to turn it in our minds to think deeply about it over and over again so we read the word the holy spirit quickens the word to us we meditate on it we think deeply about it we need to meditate on the word of god so that we can be grounded in the word not only just read but meditate and also to allow the word to dwell richly in us does the word of god have place in our life the reading of the word the meditating of the word what place does the word of god have in our life we need to ask ourselves the scripture says let the word of god dwell in us abide in us stay in us not in small measures but richly what place does the word of god have in my life what place does the word of god have in your life be in the word let the word dwell in you richly and what we read in james 122 obey the word now i hear the word of god i need to obey the word of god so i can hear some more and i can obey him again obey the word of god so many times we want to hear the word but we have no intention of obeying so many times you know we make that we are so excited god i want to hear a word from you what do you want to say about this god what do you want to say about this and the other thing but we just want to hear it and be excited about it and be happy about it now the first part is good but the second part is to carry it out to do what the word of god says and that brings it complete makes it complete and james 122 we are exhorted to be diligent doers of the word and then we see that our mind needs to be renewed to the word of god now let's say the holy spirit tells us something quickens the word to us now our mind can cancel it 
no and that's it right our mind can actually you know we need to validate a mind needs to be renewed to validate and say yes so if our mind just cancels the instruction of god then we will get nowhere so like we saw last time last sunday our mind needs to be renewed or reformed or realigned to the word of god and of course i need to pray in the spirit when i pray in the spirit when i pray in the holy spirit the word of god says that my spirit prays i receive the revelation i am edified where am i edified in the inner man my born again spirit is edified my born again spirit receives the revelation from god the mysteries of god so i pray in tongues i pray in the spirit so paul writes and he makes a statement he says i pray in tongues more than you all no wonder he received revelation after revelation right he says i pray in tongues more than you all praying in the spirit now when we train our senses it also um goes without say, saying that we need to test the leading of the spirit test what we are sensing in the spirit um and there are four tests that we can take that through what we are sensing first one is this that the word and the spirit agree there is no contradiction between the spirit of god what the spirit is telling us and the word of god now if we are sensing in our spirit you know go be like robin hood rob the poor rob the rich give to the poor then you know that there's something wrong because that is not what the word of god says right it totally contradicts the word of god so we know that that's not god so the spirit and the word agree secondly the lord jesus is glorified you know in what we are sensing in the instruction that the uh, holy spirit is saying or in the way he is leading the lord jesus is glorified john chapter 16 verses 13 and 14 however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you the things to come verse 14 he says he will glorify me the holy spirit will glorify jesus for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you so the lord jesus is glorified thirdly whatever the instruction of the spirit is it is righteous the leading of the spirit is righteous psalm 23 and verse 3 says he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake it's a path of righteousness it's not a path of unrighteousness so it's a path of righteousness whatever he leads us wherever he leads us it is righteous and the fourth test is that other mature believers or other godly people bear witness to it there are also people who pray who are mature who know you and who understand the season of life that you are in and they bear witness to it second corinthians 13 and verse 1 says but by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word is established so other believers also will bear witness and say yes this is what god is saying you know we we see a incident in joshua chapter 1 when we when god gives him the instruction and he says uh, you know joshua um meditate on the word and and all and so on and he says only be courageous do not be afraid be courageous be very courageous and if you read through the chapter you will see that the people the israelites say the very same thing to him they come back to joshua and they say we will follow you we will go wherever you going only be very courageous be strong and be very courageous the very words of god so others will bear witness to it so that's the test so there are some things which hinder us and we will close with this hinder us from hearing and the first thing is you know our lack of conversation with the holy spirit a lack of intimacy if i do not spend time with him if i do not talk to him and hear him speak you know how will i recognize his voice intimacy you know if my phone rings i pick it up i see it's my wife wife's number and i say hello who is who is this i'm in big trouble 
right? Having been married and having spent time and having talked and all that, having gone through this journey, I need to be able to recognize the voice of my wife on the other side. And the Holy Spirit, we will recognize his voice as we spend time, as we journey with him. We might make mistakes. We might say, who is this? But let's continue in our journey. Let's continue. Let's go to him. Let's spend time in him. Let's spend time with him. And just listen to and listen to his voice. Have him speak to us. So many times we are unloading stuff in prayer, right? We are unloading. We are downloading onto the Lord. We're saying, okay, God, this is my problem. This is my thing. These are my needs. It's fine. We need to do that. But God also says, you know, I, I have something to speak. Secondly, Mark chapter 4 and verse 17 talks about stony ground. When the word falls on stony ground, when the sun comes up, the seed is, is burnt. It doesn't have any root. And it refers to tribulation or persecution which arises because of the word. Now God gives some instruction, gives you a plan and asks you to do something. And everything is not going to be all rosy. There could be persecution. There could be something which come against it, some opposition which arise because of the word. And if we are not careful, we will allow these things to choke that instruction, choke that vision that God is putting in our hearts. Verse 19, Mark chapter 4, talks about thorns and it refers to the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches and lust for other things or desires for other things. These can also short-circuit God's instructions. Cares of the world. Worries, deceitfulness of riches, our dependence on the riches rather than on God. You know, God says, it is he who gives us richly all things to enjoy, but there's a fine line between putting our dependency on the riches than on the giver of the riches. So that's the deceitfulness of riches. Where is our dependence on? And talks about the desires for other things, maybe pride or position over and above the word of God and it chokes the word of God. So these are things that hinder us from hearing. And sometimes we are looking out for the spectacular. I want God to lead me. I want God to speak to me. But I want God to do it in a spectacular way, all fireworks and smokes and lights and so on. And only then I will you know, do what he's asked me to do. And when we read uh, 1 Kings 19, verses 11 and 12, God instructs Elijah to go out and stand on the mountain. And scripture says that the Lord was not in the wind. He was not in the earthquake. He was not in the fire. But in that still, small voice. In that still, small voice. So let's not miss the supernatural leading of God, the guiding of God, just looking out for the spectacular. Now God wants to lead us and he, he wants to lead us in all these ways and he wants to lead us in his purposes, into his purposes. And you know, let's decide today and say, God, I want to be sensitive in the inner man to that spirit sense of feeling and hearing and, and seeing and, and, and the other, other faculties God might use, but we have the word of God. We need to be grounded in the word of God so that we can discern and so that we don't go off on a tangent. Amen. God has a plan for us, a beautiful plan for each one of us. And the best thing is he wants to lead us and he wants to bear witness to our spirit, speak to us in our spirit. Why don't we bow our heads and pray and and ask the Lord to speak to us this morning. Maybe we've hindered, you know, the voice of the Spirit. Maybe God has been speaking to us all along and, um, you know, we kind of put him in a box and we said, you know, if God can only speak like this, then we see in Scripture that God chooses to speak in many ways. 
and the word and the spirit will not contradict so maybe you can make a choice make a decision say god i want to follow you god i want to follow you step by step as you lead me lord i will follow you yes lord i know that the way may not be all easy it might be difficult it might be challenging but i want to follow you god because in you o oh god there is life the words that you speak they are spirit and life and god the, we want to thank you this morning lord as a congregation o oh god for the way that you've been leading us lord for the way that you've been equipping us god and it's all because o oh god you love the world master and it's all because lord you want us to go into the world o oh god and share the gospel o oh master lord and to be instruments of righteousness o oh god and to be vessels o oh god in your hand vessels of glory o oh god in your hand o oh master and father god we just pray o oh god that you would prepare us today lord that you would enlarge o oh master enlarge o oh father god our understanding expand our understanding o oh god lord we trust that this message was a blessing to you we'd love to hear from you You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also, visit our website www.apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.